up the podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. But I want y'all to stop what you're doing. Drop everything what you're doing right, right now. And go ahead and like, subscribe, follow, share us on all streaming platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. You name it, we're on it. But we're also on Patreon. That's where you're going to find our full-length interviews. And for our membership fee, you can even do it on YouTube as well. See, our, all our full-length interviews, that's the only way you're going to see it, is on our membership package. Thank you in advance for the support. Thank you in advance for the support. Of course, you got to thank our viewers for their support. I definitely appreciate them. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Uh, man, I'm going to be real with y'all, man. I got a guy in here today. I'm not going to say it, Steph. I know you what you think I'm going to say, but you Let don't know, Miss Jamaica, what mm-hmm. I'm going to say. Let me see. This guy right here, man, um, when I first heard about him, uh, I heard Bun B say that he would pimp C's, uh, 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 pimp C's, he, he was protege. And then he followed after Pimp C, uh, checked it, you know, pretty much the stats and uh, talked with him last time. And it blew my mind the stories that I had heard about the pimp, RIP to Pimp C. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he the king of the South. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, not only the South, uh, my number one. So, you know, it's only right. That I'd have Steve Below in the building today, man. What's going on, man? Hey, man. What's going on? What's happening? Man, thank How y'all you. How y'all doing? Thank you. Thank We're you. Thank great. you for coming back on Boss Talk 101, man. Yeah. I ain't going to lie, man. It's a lot of people that done came through since you was here. I want to kind of, you know, go back into some of the stories of Pimp C. But I also want to know what, what you've been up to in the last year, you know, because that's been a while. Yes. I always reshare your videos, your interviews. People love them. People love the uh, the stories. The We just want to feel a part of the pimp, you know, uh, on, on the things that he accomplished, the people he accomplished it with. Um, and so we just thank you. We appreciate you for all the love. My pleasure. Man, how we doing over here, man? We doing good, man. My boss talk 101 coming through, man. We we was really, (laughs) really new, right? Yes. Yeah. We was new when you first came on here, man. And you sent us Bobo, too. I mean, you sent us Bobo, and then Bobo sent us... Oh man, he he basically brought an aura with him, and it kicked off some stuff that he got going on. Shout out to Bobo and Super Tight. You Bobo. know what I'm saying? Yeah, Bobo and Jazzy K. You called yeah. me and you said, <laughs> "Yeah, Jazzy K." You called yeah. me, you say, "Uh, man, uh, you need to interview Bobo." I never forget that. I was at the mall. I was at Town East Mall walking around, and you called me, and I was like, "Bobo, I don't know no Bobo." And that nigga said, my man Bobo just lost his... I said, oh, man, yeah. get that nigga over yeah. here. <laughs> well, you know what, how, how it actually happened? Uh, Bobo had reached out to me. Oh, he called you? Yeah, he had reached out to me and wanted to see how to get in touch with you. Wow. And then oh. it, it hit me. I'm like, damn, yeah, Bobo would be a perfect person to talk to oh, to get the PMC stories. So that's... It yeah. kind of came together like that. Yeah, because he saw your interview. Right. It was right. epic, and I too. think he, he was... Because I think he hears stuff and he's like, right, let me... Let me tell you from somebody who oh, really man. out there, you know. I just got a call so, yeah. from him today on something. So he's always listening to see. He's very, very uh, into if this was a legitimate thing that happened with Pimp C when he was alive and right. people saying what they saying. How is that? Like, do you ever hear some of the stories? Like, he told a story on here about another guy who felt like Bobo, he was Bobo in Houston. Oh, I believe he's in Houston. I want to say, but I don't know if he said Houston, but somewhere else thought he was the Bobo and really didn't even feel, you know, felt like that the song that was made that one day was dedicated to him. Yeah. So do you ever hear stories you're like, man, I don't know. Because it's a lot of conspiracy theories out oh, there on man. PMC, it's, man. It's crazy, man. It, it's it's the stuff that I see on online or mostly like on YouTube is just the... Uh, I don't even really want to repeat them. No, like you don't some, have to repeat them. Some I of the ain't titles, wanna... but it's just, you know, it's crazy, you know, and I just, I look at it and, you know, I know uh, somebody like that who had the kind of impact that he had, that comes with it. That comes you know with it. I, I'm that glad you understand it. that yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've had some, man, I had, I had brought Bobo on here and I bought, um, Pimpin' Ken on here. Mm-hmm. And they both got to telling stories. Tit for tat. Boom, boom. Yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of it. You ever- and these cats were 
really there. They you know really rock like they with They were right there in the trenches. You know, that's what I'm right. Saying? They so, rock with him. So nobody better to tell the story. So they both him. going back yeah. and forth. Well, you the shoes that you had seen him buy? <laughs> I got them shoes. Yeah. Stuff like that. I was yeah. loving every minute of it. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, um, I think it's uh, Pimp and Ken say, "Well, you know, it was a sex tape." <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I said, "Whoa!" <laughs> And Did you know about it? I, that's uh-uh. my first time hearing anything about it. I swear okay. to God, I that, I didn't even know that. I was, tripped yeah. out when he said it was a sex tape. I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, that he had, and that it was basically a tape that had not been, uh, you know, that that nobody had seen but certain individuals. Yeah. Then you see, he said, I'm not gonna say who it is. They took that and spit this so hard all over the internet, everywhere, and you heard all these stories about who it was, and they put people in those slots. If you notice on my video, I had it black shadows. Yeah, I shadowed the people because he never yeah. said. Yeah, I, I I know which videos or what kind of videos you're talking about, and I'm looking at. It, I'm like, <laughs> no, that timeline don't add up. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? This couldn't have happened. That couldn't have happened. I don't know for sure about anything, but. I do know how to put the timelines together. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't think, you know, that's possible. This is possible. So it, it's it's kind of entertaining, man. But uh, I just, I don't know nothing about I, it. So I, 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 I definitely, uh, Pim McKinn came back on here because Vlad had said, asked Boosie about it, but he didn't mention Boss Talk 101. And he didn't mention Pim McKinn. Well, he mentioned Pim McKinn. He mentioned the tape, but he didn't mention Boss Talk 101. And he felt like it was a flagrant thing he did that to pot up, try to put a key and boost it back to get him to respond in a negative okay. way. So okay. it ticked Pimp and Ken off, and he went crazy right here in that seat. Man, you should have got on here talking about, you know, me putting my name. You could call me. You know me. And he was talking right. to Vlad. Right. And I right. felt him on that, actually. I really did. Right. I felt right. him. I was like, you really right. Yeah, especially Not since even, he was the one that was talking about it. And you know yeah. how to get a hold of him. Just holler at him and, and get the story from the horse's mouth. Exactly. And yeah. I thought that was I thought that was uh, crazy that that story about that sex tape took that many turns. Yeah. It had everybody that's the thing tripping. about the internet, man. It, it just... You know, once you put something out there, man, it it grows all kind of legs. Legs, yeah. And and you know how it was in school. If yeah. you tell one kid on in the front row, by the time you get back around to that last kid, and when it's about eighteen, totally different, yeah. totally <laughs> different story. <laughs> but I just, you know, yeah. it's a scripture that say, you know, talks about Jesus, and it says Paul, and and and, and it talks about the fact of Paul said he didn't care about Jesus' name being spoke, whether it was for bad or good, whatever whatever way they were speaking it, long as the gospel was being preached. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I feel like let's keep Pimp C name alive yeah. at all costs. Yeah. If Pimp C were living here today and big as he was going and where he was headed, just like Jay-Z, he'd be getting those theories, all type of things said about him, same way they talk about Puff Daddy. So whether he was dead or alive, yeah, they would still be talking. They build you up to tell you down. That's how it go. That's just the way it is. Yeah, so, yeah. so what, man, what you been up to? I've been working, man. Been working? working. Yeah. What about the music? You came over and told him we was going to do yeah. You were going to listen yeah. to the music? And yeah. I said, he done put that on the back burner <laughs> now, man. No, nah, no, nah, I've been working on it. You have? Yeah, I've been working on it. I got some complete songs, so I'm just comp- I'm putting a bunch of songs together. I'm going to compile them together and see which ones go together. So, yeah. No, nah, I've been working. Okay. Yeah, okay. I've been working. Not as much as I would like to, but it's been going on. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, you at with it? So, Okay. I like to, you know, I've been talking to you some stuff off air, but I want to get into that because you do insurance, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And you travel a lot. Yeah. So traveling, what's the, out of all the places you've been, what's the one place that stuck out to you the most as in like, I would live there? Hmm. Uh, Probably either Jacksonville. Well, there's a few places. Jacksonville. And why? Uh, I like the size of it. I like the size of the city. It's like, it's not too big. It's not too small. Mm -hmm. And any place that's close to a lot of water, I can dig it. Uh, You got the St. John's River, which leads out into the ocean. 
Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's huge. You know what I'm saying? And, um, just a lot of, uh, I like the climate out there. It's not like really like too, too humid. I mean, it's humid, but not human, humid. Uh, a lot of beautiful women out there. That's always, you know, a plus. Yeah. Yeah. So what's uh, the con? Why you would, why you're like, eh? um, I don't like it as much as I like Texas. Okay. Yeah, I really haven't found One more time for that old boy. I said it, but I want to hear that real loud and clear. I want y'all to get yeah, this. Yeah. This boy here is special. Yeah. Now say that. What'd you say? Yeah, I don't like him as much as I like Texas. So Texas. Like everywhere you've been, you don't like nowhere as much as you like Texas. No, nah, I really hadn't found the place. What is it about Texas that you love so much? Uh, I, Well, for one, I was raised here, so I'm, I'm acclimated to so it. So you're biased. You can't no, even. no, I'm not biased. Uh, because I mean, I when you know when I was a lot young, I did consider living other places. Mm -hmm. But it took me to go to other places and actually spend a little time there to make sure. I mean, to to kind of realize that uh, Texas is where it's at. Texas is where it's at. Like I, I don't necessarily really want to stay in the city, but as long as I'm in Texas. So if somebody was supposed to know nothing about Texas and they're contemplating moving here, what would be their what would be the main attraction? Why you said you have to come to Texas? Bang for your buck. I think bang for your buck is it has a lot to do with it. And then on top of that, we have all of the things that any other big city has as well. Oh, well, as far as, the, you know, the big cities in Texas. I heard Atlanta now. You can get your bang for your buck in Atlanta, too. Yeah. Yeah. I like Atlanta. Atlanta is cool. Uh, to me, it's just a little too crowded, I guess. For because me to Texas is so there. big, so you don't really see how many people really lives right, here right uh but i love atlanta i mean I, i've always liked atlanta for like our aggressiveness that i see us doing out there you know that's always inspiration i, that I think is. that's one of the main to me that's one of the main uh attractions about atlanta why texas don't have that oh man uh I because would say the, for they show us that it's possible they show us you know people always say oh it's not possible because we don't we don't come together. We don't do right by each other. Yeah. But if they're us and they're doing it, why we can't do it too? I think we, we're we getting there. If, if you want to break it down, I think Houston is pretty much there as far as, you know, everybody working together and, and doing things together. I, and Houston has really been there for a long time. That's mm -hmm. why you see a lot more things happening in Houston than you, you would Dallas. Dallas is just... You know, it's historically it's it's been behind in that regard. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But we're getting there because communication is more like we, we're communicating more. Um, like I said, I think I said on the last interview, Dallas is just so spread out. Uh, networking in the past has been really difficult. But now it's a lot easier given that people can communicate more freely now. I never so, looked it up. Who's bigger, Dallas or Houston? Houston is bigger. Houston is yeah. the fourth maybe even third biggest uh, city in the United States. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it so much more uh, aggressive. Uh, it's It's got a lot more things that people channel into because of the size of it. Um, we're not we're not doing bad now. Don't get it twisted. Dallas is a, a place, men, you know, I have this situation where I tell people this all the time. Um, Dallas and Fort, Dallas Fort Worth is known for billionaires. Yeah. You know that, don't you? Yeah. It's a lot of them. Yeah. Sam Walton's people is over there in yeah. Fort Worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a lot going on here. Yeah. But then you got Robert Smith, shout out, over in Austin, the richest brother in America, uh, an yeah. um, African-American brother. Mm -hmm. One paid all that money for Morehouse College for all those students yeah. that time. Yeah. So, you know, Texas has got a lot of opportunity, and people know it. That's why they move here. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why I would, I would choose to stay here is because of the opportunities. And mm -hmm. to finally see, especially this city, to finally see it starting to thrive and, and prosper as people getting together instead of, you know, uh, everybody wanting to be first. You know right. what I'm saying? And people starting to realize that, hey, we can do it together. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's one of the things I'd, I'd like to just see this city just coming to its own in that kind of regard. I would, too. I really would. But I keep trying to figure out what would it take? And I can't come up with an answer. Uh, really, I think it would take a, uh, a certain type of mentality that needs to become the popular or the norm. But somebody got to start it. And yeah. within 
every generation in order for something to become popular somebody have to start it when it wasn't popular and everybody looking at them at the crazy like yeah really you yeah. know and down talk them and that's how everything becomes popular nothing just starts and be like oh yeah that's dope yeah it doesn't happen like that people don't like yeah. change so somebody has to step out there and be like i really don't care and then after a while just like music you play a certain song on the radio and how many of us be like oh really but hear it every day after week after week day after day and you're like man it's jamming <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you see what yeah. i mean so yeah. that applies to everything yeah. in life wow when it comes to the music uh hip-hop how do you feel you you know you're a dallas vet like how do you feel about where the music is when you look at across the board not just dallas but in the south i'll say because that's what i more concentrate on i think um i think a lot of it is is come back to the to the roots you know what i'm saying it's like um i listen to a lot of a lot of music these days and it's got the 808 drums in it you know the 808s have always been there but 808 started way back in the, the early 80s you know what i'm saying uh but I like the new music that's out now. Uh, I think there's a large variety. Uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more real voices. Then that auto tune. Well, yeah, a little less of that, and some more real voices. Like some of the some of the auto tune stuff is cool. Like I'm I'm with it, but uh, it's kind of got everybody sounding somewhat the same now. Would you blame that on Lil Wayne? Because a lot of people just was who uh, started it. Was it no? Nah, it Wayne? wasn't Lil Wayne that started, but he dang show sure mastered it. <laughs> I mean, he was. Uh, it, they was talking about top artists the other day, and they they said that that they were saying that Fifty Cent he couldn't stand next to Fifty Cent in a versus. They put him up Fifty up higher than him. Um, than who? Than Lil Wayne. Really? Yeah. That, but it was the East Coast, I think. Judgment. You know, it always matters who's making the judgment call. I don't right? know how you can call that on any coast. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't know. About I don't that. agree with that either because yeah. he worked so hard when he was when he was really doing his thing. Yeah. I never seen nobody just go at it the way Lil Wayne did and be creative with his wordplay like yeah. he was. You yeah. know, oh, I mean, just uh, just his growth alone as an artist. You know, I mean, from from when he started as a young kid. You know what I'm saying, and to to where he's at now. Uh, he's metamorphosized into so many different other people, yeah, and and styles, and yeah. mastered them all. Like none of them sound bad. You know what I'm saying? No. Not many people can do that. Not like, many man, people. They'll find their style. They'll find their their niche, and they'll come in. They'll use that. And they won't be able to switch it up if they kind of veer off from what they're used to doing or what people are used to them doing. You know, it's it's that's a that's a slippery slope. You know, very but, slippery but with slope. Wayne, he was able to 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 start from where he started, and he he switched up on him. And I think that that has a lot to do with his longevity. You know, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. Uh, you can't you can't you can't switch it up like that and be successful at all of them and not have a special talent. Yeah, he kind of I seen him when he when he brought you know on that uh, stunt like my daddy. It was more. I seen a lot of that's when the red rag got real prevalent for. Him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then, then after that, you see him, he jump up and grab a skateboard at one point, a good toy at another point. You know, uh, he's recreating and reinventing all the time. I don't know if he's planning it. I'm pretty sure they're proposing and planning because that's what them boys do. You know what I like about <clears throat> that though, bro, um, by him picking up the guitar and, still, you know, messing with rock and showing the kids you don't have to be one way. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. You don't have to be just like the person that you see on TV. Like all of these different types of people are cool. Mm -hmm. It's which it's about whichever one you feel the most or the one that you identify with the most. That's I can I appreciate that about him being able to switch his styles up and his whole, you know, everything. So yeah, yeah. I I think I agree with that as yeah. well. I like the way he had the versatility. He was able to translate, uh, uh, be transparent and you know, being who, who he needed to be at the times. Uh, I think more of our youngsters right now should be, uh, you don't really see nobody able to, tra you know, you see them, but they're not like he was. Look at all the transformation I just told you about. Yeah. yeah. Do you see any other artists that's doing that, that's going into different genres? Like, a lot of times people stay where they're comfortable at. Yeah. 
you can listen to a, 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 a what's that boy name? Uh, Twenty One Savage. He sound yeah. good, but yeah. he sound a lot like Twenty One Savage. Yeah, I'm being real. Yeah, it, he he dope because he they do features with different people, whether it be Drake or whether Drake do one with him or whether it be Future and him or they keep it real conservative to towards what they're you know what they're doing. Right. Lil Wayne was changing with the times, is what I'm saying. That's what made him different, right? Yeah. 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 But he was not only changing with the times, he was changing with himself, too. With himself. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. 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 Uh, he grew up take right in front of that, us, right? Huh? He oh, yeah. Up. Yeah, he grew up right in front of us. Yep. Yeah. What What about, um, I had a dilemma on here. I had to check some dudes on here. I, you might not have been watching the episodes when I checked them. Um <laughs> And you might not agree with me, but you this hit kind of close to home down there uh, with Mayo Nim and all the people you were rocking with. I told people that Boosie make great songs. Boom, he gonna drop you some great songs. But I don't think Boosie has had a better set project than Webby did with Savage Life One and Two. Just a just an all around pro. You know what I mean? Just put together album boom drop it i don't it's hard to get around savage life one and two man Sad, especially savage life one <laughs> especially savage life one savage life one was put together really 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 well you were, were like during that time you had already moved away from them well or you yeah. were still around that that whole family yeah we were still in touch uh, but I, I was fortunate enough to get a couple of tracks in on savage life one you put which ones did you do on on that one uh shit. Uh, retarded, I'm, retarded, and uh, okay, and uh, you can hear it. He can hear the beat. <laughs> stop Retar playing. Stop, stop playing. playing. Yeah, I did them too. Really? Yeah. So how was it retarded? Like when you did it, did, were you actually you were in the stool with with Webby when y'all done it? Mm -hmm. Or I you made, you, you made the beat and just sent it to him? Yeah. Were you in Dallas or down there still? Because you was down there too. I was in Dallas. So you was in that you had came yeah. back. Yeah, what happened was they had got the deal and they pretty much almost finished up the Savage Life One album. And they were looking for some other stuff. And uh I sent them some tracks and uh at the time they were recording the album in Orlando. Okay. So I flew out to Orlando and, and dropped it. They they had rented a house out there and they had a studio in there. And uh I dropped it uh out there and she put the put the lyrics on it. That was that was it. It was man. hard. Yeah, yeah. They, I, I ain't they had to get away from Baton Rouge to record the album because you know them boys they they be out there heavy. So they having a good time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they had to get them away from they was they, yeah. why they was uncomfortable. Why they yeah. wasn't thinking about everything. Yeah, that was the first time I ever flew on a plane, man. That was really? Back in uh, what was that? Two thousand. You went five. down there. Yeah, yeah. I flew out there to Orlando. Yeah. And and y'all hung out or how yeah, was we it? hung out in the the rent house. We were just all like in one house. You know who what all saying? was it? Oh man, who was it? It was me. Webby was there. Mel was there. Turk was there. Um, shit, I really and some other people I really didn't didn't know, like friends and family and stuff of them, or you know, just people that like homeboys of yeah. uh, of uh, Webby or you know, I I didn't really I don't really remember any. But any when of names, you but. when you get in an environment like that, you knew you was locked in for that album. Oh, y'all were just hanging uh, out, working? At that point, yeah, we were just working. Just working. Didn't just working. Really know. I, I'd already sent the tracks, and they pretty much decided that they wanted them wow. at that point. So I just flew out there to, to lay them down. Okay. Yeah. Explain lay them down to the people that don't understand what the heck you mean when you say nah. you flew <laughs> out there to lay them down. Right, babe? Yeah. What the hell you lay them down? What? Well, shit, man. Back then, it, this was like before laptops. This was before digital audio workstations and all of that. I think all of that stuff was just coming in the in the play. I was a little, I wouldn't I wouldn't say late to the party in that, but mm -hmm. I still had my my old way and method of doing it, so that's what I was sticking with. But anyway, like you used to have to deal with hardware, and what hardware is like a keyboard or like a sound module or uh, any other uh, uh, drum machines or anything like that. Uh, nowadays, it's all within the laptop. They used to be all separate pieces with us. Wow. So uh laid the track down. I had to take my my keyboard, my drum machine, and my Roland JV ten eighty sound module all out there to Orlando, 
we plug it into the studio they sync it up and uh they sync it up through midi like everything all of those three machines were locked together you know what i'm saying and they all time synced all with each other so when you push the play button on the record or the, or the uh, console it kicks it off wow and you land the tracks in real time so as as the tracks are playing you land it in real time on a i think we were working with pro tools we, we were at least working with pro, pro tools, tools at that time yeah, yeah but uh pro tools was still kind of new so just land it land each track cymbal kick snare sample horn whatever all in real time and then uh then they will come back and rap over it Okay, well, we'll rap rap. would come come in and work uh, rap over it. That's to get it, the technique down to where it sounds exactly how they want to get it. Well, it's to actually make the song. Make the song. Yeah. Um, to record the song. Shall how I many times did Webber didn't take a lot of time doing it back during this time? Nah. He, you nah. know, he 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 loved that music. Yeah. I love the way he don't stop rapping. Yeah. Seemed like he ain't gonna never stop. But when he start going, it just it would keep going, keep yeah. going. I could hear him just. You did. It wasn't gonna be no stop. Like it almost wasn't gonna be no uh, chorus or none of that stuff. No, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You noticed that, right? Yeah. And I, I yeah. love that because it made it feel like the momentum was just not letting down. Yeah. Um, his style, man. His, his style is like one one thing I really like about his style. He always manages to sneak some funny shit in a song, like make it sound funny. You know what I'm saying? I really can't think of a line right now, but. I always remember laughing at a lot of his songs, you know what I'm saying? Really? You know, he always, he, he, he got a good way of, of talking to gangster, but then he'll make it sound funny, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. So yeah, did you he, guys... He's unique like that. You Okay, so after that, you basically, you, you stayed down there how long? Uh, I think it was like three or four days, something like three that. Three or four days. Yeah, it wasn't a long time. It didn't, it didn't take long getting it done. No. Yeah. So I think the most thing, when I look at Webby and Boosie, like I said, they both dope as far as you, you patriotic when you, when you think about artists today. I, I heard one guy say that Boosie, he don't think Boosie can rap no more, meaning he couldn't do another album. What do you think about Didn't that? Didn't somebody say Boosie is um Not than, Boosie, uh, Webby. Webby. Somebody said Boosie, they think Boosie better than Pimp C. That's because they're young. <laughs> I'll give them that. When they're young, they don't know no better. <laughs> you, am I right? Yeah, because they never they yeah. never dissected Pimp C. <laughs> they wasn't there when Tell Me Something Good came out. They wasn't there when uh, when Pocket Full of Stones come out. Dope had just hit the city. People had just started. New Jack City wasn't had long been come out. Cash Money wasn't around, but they were thinking about how to they 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 wanted to be a part of this thing. Am I right? Yeah. So sometimes it takes it's, it's the it's the age gaps. I think. Yeah. Like back in the day, you couldn't tell me that uh. Keith Sweat uh, wasn't better than Smokey Robinson. But as I that, got that's older, a good example. as I got older, I'm like, man, and, and especially like after finding out all of the stuff that he all wrote. All the stuff, yeah. Yeah, Smokey like, was a right, writer, hell, hell nah. of a writer. Hell no, nah. no, nah, ain't, ain't, ain't topping Smokey. Yeah, But yeah. you know, but I didn't, I wasn't highly exposed to him as a kid. I, I knew Keith Sweat and that whole everything moving forward you know what i'm saying that's it that's yeah, it as you talk about uh smoky did anybody tell you as a kid that you reminded them of him <laughs> yeah my best friend coming up as a kid every time i went over their house she hey smoky <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like when you said his name it like it just dawned on me because you light like him and you have the yeah. eyes like he yeah. does yeah oh. yeah she used to call me smoky when i was a kid i never wow. thought of yeah, that yeah williams god bless her soul man um i um like I said, I'm gonna go back into that that Boosie a little bit. Cause Boosie is uh, um, like a. Said, said Webby, you had to. No, no, about no, Webby. no. I I had already messed with him about Webby, but Boosie, I wanted to go over to him because I, I I well I did ask him did he think Webby could still rap right. rap but you know because he's been going through a lot lately. Mm -hmm. He had wore a, a girl old type shirt with a meat coat. I think that was a tank top pulled up. I don't know what the <laughs> hell he was doing. Yeah, it I was saw it. it was crazy. Yeah. But at the end of the day, <laughs> that's girl <my>. type shirt. <laughs> Yeah, but that's my guy. Yeah. He got little daughters and everything else. I ain't playing with my, my I ain't, he ain't going. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. Then why so, would he wear something like that then? He probably just was having a good time. Might have been drinking a little bit. Having, you know, people like to have a good time. I had an old uncle named, <laughs> I had an old cousin named Clint. He get drunk and do all kind of stuff. Oh. You never know what he might do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you don't seen that guy. Like, yeah. like people act yeah. like these guys don't get older. People act like these guys. These guys are in their 30s now, right? 40s, 30s and 40s? 30s. Uh, at mid thirties, I guess these guys are are getting older. 
um, I expect them to be people and go through things like anybody else. Only mm -hmm. difference is theirs get to display on the internet. That's the only thing, man. And that's the only thing. It's like, is I think fame is overrated. <laughs> yeah, me too. It, it, it's kind of like everybody do, they got the they got the bullseye on you, right? Yeah. I always ask people, I'm like, you know, you want the fame, you want to be like all these celebrities, but do you really know what comes Come with, with it? it? And they'll <laughs> say, yeah, they know, because of course you see it on, on TV, but to see it and actually be in it is two totally different things to me. Because we be mad at some celebrities the way how they treat their fans, because I'm like, well, you signed up for this, and this includes fans, yep. off day or not. When you go to work, you at work. So once you're around your fans, you're at work. You're at Even work. if you're not singing, not rapping, whatever, you're at work. Mm -hmm. So you better put that face on, smile, deal with your. Because these are the people who's buying your music, downloading your music, whatever, buying your your merch, everything, yeah. supporting you. And some so of those people say. worship you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Some of those people really, like they get up in the morning thinking about you right. go to sleep thinking about you. So it's yeah, you got to be careful. And some it. people, and some people don't care. They'll no 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 autographs or no pictures or no yeah. but i can see how some people make it bad for others because some people right. take it to the they'll see that celebrity with their kids and try to bum rush them and you know be disrespectful and so forth so yeah. it makes you because i remember when halle berry you remember in the past when paparazzi and whatever would always try to do that even when she had her child with her mm -hmm. and she tried to sue them and do all this other stuff because of that yeah you know what i mean because they take it to the limit yeah no, yeah. she didn't. She had checked one of them. Yeah, she guys. did. She yeah. went in. Yeah. I think a lot of times they have to check them. They live that life every day. At some point, they will have to check them. They will have to do something to let them, you know. You you just can take only so much, right? Yeah. So you I get, get tired it. of it. Everybody's human being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm more, you know, I go back in that music, man. I, I look at, like, when I look at the the beats and stuff, you say you did two two songs on there, and and, like, did you ever do anything with Boosie? Yeah, I did uh, some of his early stuff, like when he first went over the trill. Yeah, uh, song called Head Buster. Yeah, the one, the one with Pimp C on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. you did that one. Yeah, man, that thing was hard, boy. That, made that. They had another rent house in Baton Rouge. We were just hanging out there, and uh, I was working on the track. And I think Pimp was in town for like maybe a weekend or something like that. And uh, he came over to the house, and he heard the beat. And he had thought about this concept. He said, yeah, we're going to be the V12 boys. So it's supposed to be him, Boosie, and I think it was Webby. But it was supposed to be three of them. They were going to call themselves the V12 boys. Really? No, I don't think Webby was in it. <laughs> I think it was just Pimp and Boosie. Just Pimp and Boosie? Yeah. Early on, it was just Pimp and Boosie. Yeah. yeah. I remember because I, yeah. I I was watching that move. Yeah. That's why you had here at the beginning of that song, Pimp say, V12 boys. That's like that was his introduction of the V12 boys. Really? He, yeah, he was going to do an album with Boosie called the V12 boys because back then the V12 Benzes was like real. Yeah, real yeah. Hot. He always talked about. He, he always, always put them in the rap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, got the that, V12 man, that been Benz so dope. parked outside. That it ain't enough so dope, room man. to keep the girls. Yeah, yeah. That's my boy, that's man. Called the V12. V12 boy. boy. That dope. <laughs> that dude, he, he he had all kind of ideas, man. They would just pop out of him, man. And now all of them just sound brilliant. Everybody know? say that he would have been, they would have been millionaires, Bobo included, oh. if they would have, if, if he had things set up for them, if he'd have just lived another 30 days, things was going to be, you know, so much this or that. Like, w were there any things planned with you and him, or did y'all talk when he had came, you know, during that time? Yeah, like when he was locked up, we were supposed to um, start the 808 Boys. It was a okay. production team with, with he and I. And, uh, I mean, that never really came into, well, it did, but I ended up not being a part of it. Mm. Uh, but uh, Why? Just like after he passed, um, it was just a lot of stuff. So that, the 808 Boys didn't become a thing until after he had passed? Right, uh, okay. but it was two other producers that did it instead. Because first it started out as me and Pimp, and then uh, he will bring he was bringing some other guys into the fold, and then uh, it just uh, as time went on, uh, we never really just did get it together. But was it because you basically 
kind of step back, as Bun B said when he was on uh, um, he was on Beehive when he said that you kind of you know like it wasn't fun no more. Like what yeah. did you just kind of was it because you didn't pursue it and you didn't really have the drive to keep going with it like that after Pimp passed? Yeah, well, when it came to stuff that he he had created or uh, ideas that he conceptualized. I just didn't feel like it was it was my right to try to claim it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to be just like another one of those people that's grabbing at the opportunity now that he's gone because it was some of that going on. But you know what I'm saying? So I just didn't. I get what you what you're saying, but I also look at it from a perspective of keeping his legacy alive. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? It's yeah. a real thin line where. <laughs> You got to think about it because a lot of times people look at you and say, man, they're using his name. Mm-hmm. Are they doing this for clout? Are they doing this to shine? But how much of that will will look even if, if you were doing it to keep his legacy alive? People still going to talk. Yeah. They're not going to stop talking no matter what. Yeah. But if you don't do nothing, do you think Pimp C would be proud that you don't do nothing? Well, I didn't sit back and do nothing. I no, just, but I'm saying what you got to think yeah. about what I'm saying. You know, yeah. I'm not trying. Would he be? Would he want you to carry on and carry? Because he didn't teach you or show you these things, and y'all didn't work together those times, and y'all didn't put on no, those long hours in. Like I told Bobo for nothing. Yeah, yeah. He would want to see y'all out here doing what he loved doing. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. So I know you kept. You definitely wasn't gonna just not do the music. Right. But. A lot of times when you see people out here cloud chasing, it can be confusing, right? But we also know that we got to keep that PMC legacy going. <laughs> so it's like we can't worry about what everybody, I don't care what them dudes do. Because yeah. they didn't really have a relationship with him a lot of times anyway, like you did. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, but like he had different relationships with people, different that, people I, I right. that I didn't really know about. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. Whenever he would holler at me, he just holler at me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I didn't. He knew a lot of people, you know, and he was doing a lot of things with a lot of people. So uh, I didn't know like the ins and outs of all of you know. All I knew was was is what he told me. You know what I'm saying? What he was going to do and what he was wanting to do. And I'm I'm pretty much like, hey man, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you're ready to do it, I'm here. And like after he passed, man, it just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I mean. Just wasn't the same without him, bro. Mr. Lee said that. Mr. Lee yeah, said it just he, wasn't the same. It didn't. I didn't really have like a strong desire to to, uh, I guess, uh, like any ideas that he had made. Just to, I don't know, man. It was. It's just. It just wasn't the same. It, was, it wasn't it, the same. It, it's like, how, how can you start a, a production company with the guy who's the main guy? But the guy's not like there anymore. It's not like I didn't feel like I couldn't do it by myself. Uh, just wasn't, you know. That had those ideas had him written all over it, and there was no way that I I felt like I could go in and make them shine and thrive the way he was gonna make them shine and thrive. Just just because of the type of person he was, you know what I'm saying? And uh, his ideas were great, but they came out of his head, you know what I'm saying? And they fit him, and they fit everything that he was doing, you know what I'm saying? And it went right along with him, but with him gone, it's kind of like, uh, you ever see on, on, when they do those horror movies or like special effects on TV, you got a, somebody in a suit standing up and then the body leaves a suit and yeah. the suit just, yeah, suit yeah. Just drops it's not the, ground. the same. It, it just wasn't the same. Bro. Yeah. You know? I, I look at it like, like, like I said, when I, when I look at a lot of different things that happen, even even Bun B, like after that happened, did he reach out to you and y'all y'all did some more music together? Yeah. And when y'all did, what music was it and how was it the first time y'all came together to do that music yeah. after Pimp was gone? How tough was that? It was tough. I think uh I think we were both like really, really waiting to do it. I can't remember who called who first. I I wanna say I reached out to him first and told him I wanted wanted to uh, start on an album. I, I think that's how I can't actually remember, but uh, we started working on Trill OG. Okay. I started sending them tracks for that. And uh, 
I think he, I don't, we never really talked about it, but I, I think he was really just didn't have the desire at that particular moment in time. So I think when he started thinking about the whole Trill OG thing, he was like, okay, he's ready to get back in it. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of gave y'all a place of bridging the fact of, so when y'all did that, was that the first project after Pimp had passed that, 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 that Bumby had done or had he done other projects? I think did he do one after no I, that may have been the first one that he did after after pimp I know it's been a while yeah but I mean he's had he's had successful albums even before that you of know course what I'm saying? Uh, but I think that might have been the first one that he did after after pimp passed and and when 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 you guys done y'all's uh the trilogy uh project together um it had to be different. It was totally different than working with him ever that you had ever worked with him before with Pimp being gone. Yeah, cause see, I hadn't, I didn't get the opportunity to work with him on his other albums before that. Yeah. Uh, so we hadn't worked together at that point. Uh, but the way that Trillo G came together, man, it was just like it felt like making an album. Yeah. And I, I'd always wanted that feeling as a producer. Yeah, how, how many songs exactly you did the whole thing? Felt, huh? How many songs did you do on nine? All of them. Well, well it no, was more. No, it was yeah, more yeah, on yeah, way more. Yeah, yeah, way more. I ended up doing like the majority of them, uh, but uh, I think sonically, man, to me that's that's one of my favorite albums from him. Not not saying that because I worked because there's a lot of other producers on it. It's just the way that it came together, and if it kind of put me in the mind state of how. Not that I was there, but how Snoop and Dre worked on the Chronic. Yeah, you know, how, it felt like making an album. Felt good. Yeah, it it it's like that feeling I had always wanted as a producer. How long you know? How long did it take y'all to do the project? Just uh, how did y'all send the tracks? Was it a thing where y'all just sending them? Uh, you was it was it we had a point of emailing them or sending them? Yeah, emailing was uh, capable. You could send uh, stuff email back then, but like. What I did, I went to Houston and stayed there for a little while. Locked in with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, locked in. And uh, uh, it actually uh, got me a place out there where I could stay. And then after I was there a little while, I went and stayed with some, uh, with some relatives because I got a lot of people out in Houston. So during that whole time, we was working on the album. I think it took maybe, I want to say about seven, eight months, something like that. Wow. It took a while. It yeah. took a while. Because they went out, you know, they got, you know, a lot of, a lot of great features. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of great tracks uh, from a lot of other producers, like Justice League. They had some, some heat on there. Um, uh, who else? Oh, Big E. Big E had some stuff on there. Big E Beats. Yeah, he yeah. was over here. Shout yeah. out to Big E Beats. Yeah, Big E. What's happening? What? Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you. Okay. So at, what do you remember on that Trill OG that he said to you that, that something that sticks out in that moment of time? As far as like in a conversation? Yeah, in a conversation or something that, that, that sticks out. I can't really think of one thing. And I it, it was like like after like after we finished the album, we had like, you know, a whole uh, uh album release thing at the really? studio. Yeah. Got to see a lot of people, a lot of people that I grew up listening to, you know. So it was it was it was, it was great. big. And we had the opportunity to take it to uh Atlanta, take it to the studio and play it for a lot of a lot of uh, rappers out there, so it was it was a great time. Wow, it was a great time. I think that's live. I just like the fact of y'all because to me it seems like healing. I'm looking at healing and just moving forward. And, yeah, and because that there's something in there people don't realize and talk about it. I tell Rainwater that all the time when he be over here. Like you didn't give yourself time to heal. Mm -hmm. You're trying to work and you you arguing with this person, that person, or going through the motions on the internet, it's really a cry out to say, I hadn't given myself time to, you know, heal. Yeah. You know, healing is serious, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So serious that you can you can do it through the music, but it has to be done. Yeah, yeah. Now that you mention it, that's, that, that's really what it all felt like. Yeah. It felt like a, a, a healing process. Yeah. You know, in a lot of regards, because... uh we was putting out some great music, man. Yeah. That album's got some great music on it. Yeah. And just putting it all together. I mean, there was a lot of songs that really didn't even make the cut that ended up being on the, the epilogue, trilogy epilogue. Really? Yeah. But uh, the way that that album came together, man, I, I got to take my hats off to uh, Bun and Red 
in National Red. Yeah. Because uh, you out. know he he always has a lot of a lot of great ideas when it when it comes to putting putting an album together as far as uh, con- conceptualizing the album and the flow of the album and things like that. So yeah. That's yeah. hard, man. And, and just to to be involved in a project like that where you got so many uh, different people involved wanting it, wanting to make it the best project that they possibly can, that's always a good feeling as a producer, you know, because it's not always just about the music. It's about the whole flow of that album. It's about the album cover. It's yeah. about it's about the. Uh, uh, the uh, music you know, videos, the, the wording, the videos, everything, you know, the way that everything comes together. So, yeah, it was it was great working with them in that regard, man. Did you go? I, I go back down to Atlanta when you were staying down there with him. It might have been before or after, but DOC was on here and DOC talked about meeting Pimp C in Atlanta when he was staying with MC Breed. Mm-hmm. And this was a time when. He says that Tupac was around. This is early on. Got to be early on. Tupac still was around. And he made mention like they was all in the same setting. Was there ever a time that you knew that he linked with Breed or any of those guys down there? Or you and him were just isolated to where you guys were living? And how long did you stay in Atlanta with him? About two and a half. Two and a half years? Whole, no, no, no. Like months. Oh, months. Yeah. On, on projects. Yeah, it was like uh, like a whole summer. Okay. Yeah, it was like okay. the whole summer. Uh, what year was that? Man. What oh, we got him thinking now. <laughs> Boy, I wouldn't be able to think of that. That's why I'm glad I'm over here. Man, my, you know, my memory is terrible. Bro. Yeah. I want to say, let's see, I graduated in 98. So that had to be like 01, 02 or something like that. 01, 02? Yeah, it was, it was after I graduated from college. Okay, so yeah, Pac would have been long dead at this time. Yeah, so early. Oh, but he he did like Pac though, bro. I know. He I, did I, like I heard Pac. what what yeah. when why, when you say he did like Pac, give me an example why you would even say that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He did like Pac. He did like Pac. Okay, how bro, you know? What did how he do say you know he like Pac, bro? He spit this he spit this hook that he made up to me one day. Okay, and I don't think he ever made the song. <laughs> I hope I don't get copyrighted, but I'm gonna say the hook. Mm-hmm. And I, I really don't know who he was talking to on this song, but okay. when I heard the hook, it I, I just man, he just had me rolling, man. I was, I was I, <laughs> he was talking about pop. Well, he was he was talking about somebody else telling them they ain't pop, and the hook oh, okay. went like, "You ain't pop, you ain't pop." You ain't pop, so go ahead with yourself. You ain't pop, who? Not you. You ain't you pop, 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 I said, boy, you throw, man. Hey, he was let a nigga know. He's like, nigga, you ain't no pop. You, it was somebody up there acting like pop. Yeah, yeah. And he was trying to let him know that you is not pop. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was in by two thousand. That was when you was down there. Yeah, we wow. was riding together one day, man. He started spitting that hook to me. I was, I just busted out laughing. <laughs> I got an idea who he was talking about, but I ain't. I ain't nah, you ain't got to yeah, say it, man. man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a couple of dudes doing trying to be pocket this time, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. know it. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, but but I mean, people get inspired, man. It's people that start trying to sound like uh, PMC after he passed away. Yeah. You know, this is inspiration, bro. Yeah. They try hard, like, but you get it. They want it, want that person back, you know? Yeah. And it's almost like, man, you trying to sound like Pac, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you trying to sound like Pimp. <laughs> yeah, like you trying to sound like Pac. You trying to yeah. sound like Biggie or whoever, you know? You is know there what? Any, th- oh, go ahead. I, I think a lot of people, uh, they do it and don't realize they doing it. Okay. Do you think, what's the name sounded like uh, uh, Biggie? When he came out, uh, Shine, tell me not, we want to rock with us. Shine, more so, a, that gorilla, gorilla, uh, yeah, more so him. Gorilla, uh, Shine kind of gave me his own little vibe. I didn't really catch Biggie from him, but I did. That catch deepness him from him. to be so little and to be around uh, 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 P Diddy made yeah. me think about Biggie. Yeah. Is there anybody who came out that reminded you of um, Pimp C? No, not hey, really. No. Not really. I can't. Even, I can't even think about. It. I think that's why. I think that's why he's so missed. Cause mm. there's nobody out there that really reminds you of him. You know, all you got is the stories and, and the music yeah. that he, that he recorded. Or even try to emulate him. 
you could try, but it is not going to be the same mm -hmm. because of the well, way, to me, and it's from a fan perspective, um, just the way he left it all on the track. He ain't played no game. When nah, he, went, he, he, he wasn't no filter, nah. no none of that, and nobody ain't going to be able to do that unless they coming from their heart with it. Yeah. And it was really like a Pac, because yeah. Pac do the same thing. Like when you listen to him on Hit Him Up, Hit Him Up, or yeah. any of that stuff he was doing, he wasn't trying to let... He was, he was like he, you in a car and the gas is punched all the way to the floor. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's that's probably why Pimp liked him so much because he was full throttle all the way. That's what. Like, that's that's how he that's was. That's what you know it what was. Yeah. Yeah. The dope yeah. artist, man. Just very, very dope. So, yeah. So, you, 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 yeah, you would have came later on. So, you wouldn't know about the time. But uh, I just know too short and said that he didn't know if he had met him either. But then when DOC came on, he kind of alluded to the fact that they were kind of all in the same settings or he'd seen him down there during that time. And it just, it's always, and I didn't ask him a direct question about it when it, when he was here. If I'd have thought about it, I would have. Yeah. But after I went back, you know how you sitting back looking at it like, dang, I missed that. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but he got around though, man. He, you know, he made his rounds. What was going mm -hmm. on in Atlanta at this time in them two months? Give me some, give me some, uh, give me, uh, what, who else? Was it Goody Mob coming over, popping up? Was it uh, Gil? I sure want to interview Gib. I'm looking to interview him. We're going to Atlanta here in them, uh, a yeah. couple of days. I can't recall any of them coming to the house. They didn't ever come by. Yeah, it was pretty quiet around. He didn't have nobody lived, around. Yeah, he I just mean, focused you know, on his beats. Um, I think, I think when I first got there, I think Russell was there for maybe maybe a week or two. Okay, the, uh, on the big time records. Okay, I didn't know why. I didn't. I didn't ask. But uh, Bun Bun came there periodically. So Bun showed up. Yeah, yeah. Bun and Queenie, and yeah. then um, it, it 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 was me, a cat named Young Smitty. They called Smitty the Pimp. Uh, that's actually how I kind of got to meet all of them was okay. because of Smitty. But that's that's a whole other story. Uh, I think Big Mun was there, one of his bodyguards, uh, and DJ Bird. We were okay. all at we were all at the house together. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, it was just like, I don't know, it was just like staying at a house with a bunch of friends, really. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but uh, Pimp had, you know, he was, uh, he had his wife there and his and his kid, and we were all in the house together, you know. Wow. Like, he let all of these people stay with him and his family. Mm -hmm. We were all around his family. Because everybody was family to him. Yeah, every, you know, everybody was family. So that's kind of, it basically felt like uh, just a, a family yeah. is, is what it felt like. That's hard, man. Yeah, and that's that's uh, that, but that was him though. Even when you went around, uh, Mama West, or went around her house, you know what I'm saying? It just all felt like family, you know. You, it's, how, it's all, it was all familiar. How was you and Mama West? Did you get to talk to her anytime, and did you get to know her? Yeah, I didn't get to know her like in and out, but we did talk. Uh, I, I had been around a lot, like uh, um. Uh, when uh, they had went on tour, because I went on a tour with them, they was touring with Too Short, I think Cash Money was on a couple of dates, but uh, anyway, uh, we had, I had went with them on a tour like down at the Chitlin Circuit area, you know what I'm saying? I think we hit uh, Alabama, Mississippi, all those southern states. Mm -hmm. uh, so she was down tour with us. So, you know, I got to be around a lot, talk to her. Yeah, she was real sweet, man. Wow, yeah, well, I hear so uh, many good things about her. She's almost like one of the guys, man. Really, she's yeah, just checking yeah, in, ch yeah. tapping into everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's hard. I like it. Did you ever talk with him when uh, PMC was locked up or anything? Yeah, we communicated a little bit while he was bit. locked up. Yeah, that was the one thing when I interviewed uh, Julia Beverly when she was on here. She talked about going to visit uh, PMC in prison. Yeah. Um, before she wrote, there's a lot of controversy about this book. I didn't hear none of this stuff until after she left about the book. Some people like, what well, you gonna get that? Some people felt like they was not in the book. Some people felt like they was portrayed wrong in the book. Um, how did you, did you ever read the book? I started it, I just hadn't finished it yet. <laughs> it's been a while. How long you had it? I, yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I, I pick it up, I read it, and I get into it. It's my attention span, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I've been trying to read a lot more. You know what I'm saying? But I just I always fall asleep when I read. <laughs> Me too. Sometimes. So, <laughs> but no, nah, I've been I've been meaning to finish it. But she personally gave me a copy of it. She did. Yeah. 
Yeah, she personally gave me. So a she copy knew of you. It. So you're in that book. I I heard I was. You heard but I haven't. <laughs> he hasn't got to that page. I yet. I haven't gotten to that page yet. To be honest with you. When you think, but of, she came down here. We talked. She interviewed me. Really? What did? What, yeah. did, what did you think about her when you when you were dealing with her? She seemed cool to me. Seemed like a hell of a journalist yeah. when I met her. And I mean, uh, one time when I went to Atlanta, uh, you know, whenever I'd be out in Atlanta, I'd holler at her, see how she doing. Yeah. 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 And we, we hung out at a Christmas tree lighting one time. So really? She, yeah, she good people, man, good as far people. as I'm concerned. Yeah. I like yeah. to say, I never, I, I met her that one day when she flew in and just kudos to her for even flying in and just coming straight here to do the video. Yeah to do the interview and then leave and like she had just come from another country when she came here yeah. but when she came she told the stories of pimp some of them was foggy because it's been a while you know yeah. but uh she's proud about getting a hardback copy for the book now um she do have extra footage that she hadn't showed anyone that really yeah to where she uh maybe at some point a documentary or a movie comes out um we we'll look forward to having that. How, how, who could play Pimp C in a movie, man? <laughs> man, I would say one of his sons. Yeah, yeah. Either That's, one of yeah, them. Yeah, that would be hard. Yeah. How, how could you see, and, and it's hard to do, well, you got Bun here. Um, Bun definitely could, you know, speak his piece on it and could, that would be hard. Like, like you see, uh, BMF doing for their son, that mm -hmm. would be so hard for that family to do something like that. But I like I, I say one of his sons because like I see a lot of his mannerisms in his son. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, both of them. Both of them. He, even when uh, Chad Junior was a lot smaller, you know what I'm saying. He was just like his daddy. Uh, I hadn't really seen him since he. Grew up, I saw him uh, after the funeral. Yeah, but I really hadn't seen him since then. It was a lot of people. L listen, I, you said that funeral, and and I definitely don't want to bring up too much about it. Uh, and nothing to look crazy. I got some phone calls about that. That interview did millions of views. To be honest with you, which one? Uh, about Pimp and Ken and Pimp C. That okay. day, they decided to speak on the funeral, and they was like, Pimp C didn't look like himself at the funeral mm -hmm. because I guess the, his body has stayed out so long. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about it, I did get some calls from the funeral home. They called me. From the funeral home? I'm not playing. <laughs> they watch Boss Talk, bro. That's crazy, ain't Damn. it? Damn. Yeah, you reaching somebody. <laughs> <laughs> they watch Boss Talk because of Pimp C, bro. Yeah. In Port Arthur. Yeah. I got a call from one of the guys and he was telling me about how why it was like it was from his point of view. Really? Yeah. And uh, he didn't do it, didn't call me to get on Boss Talk. He called me specifically to give me information about that and why. And, and one of the things he said, and I'll, I'll say it, he said it was because, it was weird to him because he ended up at a white funeral home and he was a, and a black person, being a black person, they usually, that's the one thing they don't, normally do. A mm. black person don't usually end up at a white funeral home. I bet you didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> now, and this was a white guy. Uh, I didn't get, I just know me and him talked and he called me. That's how powerful this stuff is. That's crazy, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. I but, mean, it's something, it's something to think about, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But he said yeah. they did the best job they could. He remembered the day he detailed everything for me and everything. So, but the only part I'm, I guess I, I need to really understand what is it different working on black dead bodies? In I am white? not. My cousin own, is definitely an owner of a funeral home, and I can get that info for you. <laughs> but <laughs> I, just, I, I never thought about it till that day when he told me that. My yeah. wife was sitting there when he called me. I never thought about that. Yeah. Um, when you when I thought about that. Um, how was that funeral from your perspective? Sad. Oh yeah, it was. It was sad. Definitely sad. No doubt. It was. It was different though. What like, made I had, I had been to a lot of funerals in my day, and just the the whole thing I'll never forget is the snipers on the roof. What? Yeah, they had snipers on the roof. They had helicopters flying around. It was crazy, man. 
It was crazy. Snipers on the roof. Why I don't know, man. I Why? Know. I have no idea. I guess I guess so many different people from so many different areas was was coming. And I know, thought something might happen. That's I'm I, I, I'm assuming that's why, because I mean you know, pretty much everybody who you think Pimp C would have known was there. But everybody, if everybody's yeah. coming together in love, why would they think something like that? Unless there was like some foul play that they think that you know. Yeah. Or something. was it the county requesting it though? They could feel like it was just too much for their, that small because it was in Port Arthur, right? Right. So they might have felt like it was just too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the time when it, when it was happening, that's that's what I was thinking. Like they they had a reason, or or they felt like something could have jumped off. How many people turned up at a funeral? He didn't just count them, but no. If you had to guess, man, I don't want to guess wrong. <laughs> I would twenty thousand. It was in the, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say twenty thousand. That would be a lot. <laughs> It three was to, at three least, to five thousand, three thousand. It was at least five. I would say at least five thousand. Okay. People. Wow. So it was a while back, but I mean, there was a lot of people that couldn't get in too. Of course. Man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, yeah, that that's the only thing that really just like, like stood out to me that I thought was different. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, but uh, other than that, I didn't see anything really out of the ordinary. Same old, same old thing when it come down to losing a loved one, really. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, in a situation like that, I, you know, I always try to, you know, stay cognizant of, you know, what the parents are going through and what they're feeling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was. It was sad. I'm yeah, pretty it was sure. It sad occasion, man. That's. Uh, you know, them kids, that's, that's the biggest part is the kids. Yeah. The kids is way more. It's way more of a situation for the kids than anything else for me. I could imagine, man. That's meaning to think about the kids and him not having the father. Right. That that's the part that, and they being so young. I think his daughter was the youngest one at the time. Right. And that would be the biggest drawback. You know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely would be the biggest drawback. You mm -hmm. know, so I definitely um um. When you think about and 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 I ain't gonna hold you too much longer, but I'm gonna get get down in there a little bit more. Um, <laughs> when you think about like uh, you see all of the different things that that's going on for us with, you know, like uh, podcasting and people everywhere doing everything. What do you think Pimp would be fitting in this whole thing right now? Because <laughs> this would be crazy. I remember his last radio interview that I seen that caused noise. Uh, he'd, uh, I don't know, man. He, he'd probably be at 900,000 subscribers right about now. <laughs> <laughs> if not more than that, Jack. Right, right, right. If not more than that. Nah, he, he would have been off the chain, man. He would have been off the chain. And I, I hear that question a lot. A lot of people on the internet ask that question. Really? Like, say, you know, say, like on Twitter, you know, if, if Pimp C was on Twitter, what would he, you know? Yeah, I, I see that a lot. You see that a lot? Yeah, because everybody know they're going to get the real from him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah. Don't, don't I think people love real. that Yeah, about just wanting to hear yeah. the real deal instead of all this fakeness. Yeah. Um, when he did Quit Hating the South and all that other stuff, what did you think? No, I understood exactly what he was talking about. Explain. Uh, just coming, you know, the East Coast looking down on the South Coast. Uh, pretty much how the songs say, you know, they be riding horses down here, you know, but uh, I don't think I don't think the whole East Coast looks at us like that. But I think at that time, see, I had I had an experience what he experienced in the music business, you know. I understood what he was talking about, but I didn't walk his shoes. So you know, the way he told the story was from how how he walked through it, mm -hmm. and once he once he told the story. Then I understood, you know. Do you think that? Do you think that it was a hard track? Oh my God, it was needed for me. I loved it because I I seen it. Oh, being a, a older cat, I I I I seen the disconnect and the way that they would. They still do it somewhat today. It's not as hard. They can't get away with it because of the internet. The internet's something else. It just let whoever be who they gonna be, and ain't nothing you can do about it. But 
if it was a way they could make it biased, like I, that statement I told you earlier about 50 Cent mm -hmm. and Lil Wayne, like that kind of stuff was, it, it, you wouldn't be able to control it as much because right. the internet can see it all. You can't hide it. Yeah. But it, back in the day, you could control those narratives a little better, don't you think? Yeah. Because you didn't have the technology to keep up with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like the internet has blown everything wide open. It's getting rid of the gatekeepers. Yeah. All kind of good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you say all kind of good stuff. <laughs> yeah. The gatekeepers, man. There's a lot of gatekeepers. Um, who would you like to see on Boss Talk 101? I asked him that question. <laughs> you got to really think. Well, he's, he, he watches because he always tells me what's going down. Yeah, it's, it's quite a few cats, man. Uh, this cat out there named See Through. Who the heck is See Through? See Through, he's a rapper. Okay. Out there, he got some uh, videos and he's got some albums out. He put together some type projects too, man. And he Quality in Dallas? Stuff. Yeah, he's in Dallas. Yeah, look him up. See through. And he, C dash T H R U. And he's very is he from the old school or the new school or what is kind of like right there in between. In between. But I would say a little bit more from the, the old old school, but like not all the way back there. Kind of like old school, new school mix. Yeah. But it like he 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 digs music, you know what I'm saying? He like musical stuff. Uh you ought to get that boy Quint Black on here, man. I thought I been, clown, man. I, I definitely uh, would like to interview Quint Black. Yeah. I've, I've heard some stories. I, I've, I actually had a guy that said he could reach out to him. My cousin linked with him a lot of times. Yeah. I'd like to see him myself. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to try to figure that out. Yeah. Um, Bobo had him on his show. He did? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. may ask Bobo how he linked up with yeah. him. Nah, yeah. Nah, he'll. He all. Hey, man. That one song that was all. That man. Mm -hmm. You think uh, Shake Them Haters Off was a hit? And man, that dude would just come up with hits and like, like, because he and I, we used to like make beats together a lot. Like, really? I, yeah, when I was living in the Grove, I used to ride to South Dallas, go pick him up, bring him over to the house, and we work on tracks together. And just some of the ideas that he would, he would spit out to me, bro. Crazy. Uh, or hits. hits. Like, he, I mean, he, he his, his hooks and his his ideas are like those hooks and ideas that you want the first time you spit them out to you, it you think hit. Like he's he's just that creative, bro. He's wow. very, very underrated. Very underrated. Uh got another uh cat that he's uh C O D. Okay. C O D. I don't I don't know if he has like any Instagram, but we worked together way back in the day. He's got some tight stuff. Wow. Uh Trying to think who else, man. Oh, uh, I get that boy B Barber on here, man. Oh yeah, B Barber. Yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Yeah, B Barber. Uh, I just want to shout out a few people. I know you know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, J Rose be doing a lot of big thing on here. You ever met J Rose? You never met J Rose. Yeah, yeah, J Rose. I don't man. think no, I hadn't met J Rose. Yeah, yeah. Reach out to him, man. I, I, let me ask you something. I got. I'm gonna shift gears on you a little bit. Um, when you look at Pimp C, right? Mm -hmm. He had that verse when he was on. I had an interview with Mike Jones, and he said on that, "You heard me, right? You heard me right. We play with our nose." And and these are some of the earlier times when one would brag about drugs on the track. Okay. Now you hear Future did it after that. A bunch of people did it. It became a thing. Um. You start seeing, back then it wasn't like it is now. You know, it wasn't, this stuff today is killing people. Fentanyl is killing people. People who ain't even, I heard the other day, and I don't know how true it is. You can go look it up. They seen, they found out that was what Coolio mm. had. Uh, really? Yeah, had experience. Know that. Yeah, I heard that yeah. the other day. We heard that about Gangsta Boo, Big Scar. Uh, these people, um, we even had kids on there who got off of it. You know, as far as the, the 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 perks and all that, is it something you? What do you think about it when you think about just just exercising that this drug thing on the track? Uh, I think it's uh, just like anything else you put on a track. Um, it's exposure. And any time uh, an immature mind is exposed to anything, it's gonna soak it up. Yeah, I'm not now. I'm not 
don't get me wrong, I'm not putting the, the total blame on uh, on the rappers oh, yeah. and the songs. Uh, it's just that, it's just a, a, a fact of it. Um, fortunately enough for uh, people who can listen to music and not absorb it like that are people that have other people around them to, to be able to tell them that, you know, you got to have a balance. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a balance. It's got to be uh, looked at as entertainment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, I think I think a lot of it is just the uh, the kids just, you know, they, they trust what they hear in this music. A lot of them trust what they hear in this music and they think it's the cool thing to do. We wouldn't wear certain clothes when we was coming up and we wouldn't say certain things unless we thought it was cool. We didn't do it until we saw somebody else do it, or we didn't say certain slang until we heard somebody else say it. Same thing. People don't really realize how it started so much so in that rock phase. It was that heavy metal and stuff. It's all over. It was really prevalent yeah. then. Yeah. I don't, and I don't recap. I couldn't understand what the hell they were saying, but I knew they was on something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the good tars, the, the, the. I mean, look at, look at the whole hippie movement. It was, the it was music serious. influenced that. Yeah, the music and the times influenced that whole that whole era, you know. I mean, they were preaching drugs back then. I mean, they were making songs. A lot of a lot of the songs were subliminals, but they were about drugs. About drugs. And then once you were enlightened that it was about drugs, you listened to. You be like, oh, oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, Mary Jane by marijuana. Yeah, sound damn good though, boy. That's that's one thing. I I you know I tell you some men. And and it, I don't know if it came out yet or if it did. Yeah, it did. Uh, Ice T said that. Uh, well, we was talking about Rick James had a, a color song first. Really, I didn't know that. <laughs> he said it was it was trash. Really, <laughs> what he had did it for the movie? Yeah, did it for the movie before before oh, Ice T. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I I like to hear what that sound like. I never heard it, but he said it was horrible. He said that wasn't his, you know, it wasn't yeah. his thing. But then I tried to get him to do it. When, that was kind of like around the, the outro of Rick too, wasn't it? Like he was yeah, kinda, his yeah. career was just kind of just glad finally kind of tapering off. Yeah, yeah, because he killed yeah. it. He yeah. killed oh, it. Oh man, cold blooded man. I listen to a lot of his old music still, man. It just I listen to it and just I listen at the instruments and the way he, his drums. I'm like, boy, he was kidding it, wasn't it? Was it's funky, man. It was hard. It just, it's got its own just rhythm. You know I met, I met all them guys as band players in Vegas one time. They took the whole at the Palm. They they just took a whole floor, and it was nothing but bands in every room on that floor. And they just every band was playing something. You go in the room. That's crazy, man. You like to be now? Yeah. <laughs> it was old, you know, like the yeah. old, like all of the old, uh, the old uh, music. Uh, there wasn't nothing new. It was just all the older, old, like the Rick James and all that. Yeah. Uh, Morris Day, you know, different people. You know what I mean? That yeah. was hard. I know you'd love that. Yeah. Because you a music that guy. Was a, that was another uh, band that was kind of cut too short. The time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I personally, after time is going on I personally feel like Prince poured the water on that because it was getting way too you hot you know he was you know he was it was man. getting way too hot for him after Prince I go was back alive and, though and man look at some of their shows and stuff and, and listen to their music he right on their heels he, he was giving he, they was giving Prince hell boy yeah yeah and, I, and they I think they came out of uh, Prince they used to be competing like ever yeah yeah, they was competing like like a dog, man. Yeah, yeah. I think we did. I, what did I forget to ask him? Did I forget to ask him anything? You sure? When I leave, I'm going to be able to be good with what everything. Did that just go off? No. Oh, it's still recording. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I, like I said, um, we just, we love, we, you, you, this won't be the last time you're on Boss Talk. You're one of my regular dudes. So whenever you in town, you always welcome to come on Boss Talk. I'm bringing the cameras out. If yeah. I need to come meet you somewhere now, it's getting it's getting different now. Yeah. I might even pull up on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to be able to present something next nah, time. I yeah, I think it, I think the conversation <laughs> is needed. I think yeah. the the culture needs to understand what happened, uh, not only with pimp but with yourself. You know, and the music and just where yeah. I, you know, that that matters. And I think people don't give it enough just. Uh, those stories uh, will never come out if you never tell them. Right. Those times will never be enjoyed if nobody never speaks on them. 
Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being with Too Short, how was Too Short when you met him? When Did you see him on tour when y'all was going? Yeah. Yeah, he was how cool. How was he? he? He was just a cool, like... He seemed this, cool this as hell. This was my first time being around cats that I kind of looked at as celebrities. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this was my first time being around those types of cats. And it, I mean, immediately, everybody that I was around, I just... You just you instantly just realize shit, they're regular, regular people. people. They're regular people. You know wow, what I'm saying? That's hard. Yeah. And, and you be know, the fools around them that be, you know, tripping. Cutting but, up. Yeah. 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 But I, I love to be in a, a fly on the wall. Yeah. Listen to some of those conversations and embrace some of those times, you know? Yeah. Y'all, yeah. you guys are special, man, because yeah. of the times y'all share with Pimp. Yeah. Uh, and, and Pimp was young when he passed away. So, he was, man. You know? Yeah, I, I think about, you know, even like the interview and stuff, the last one I did. Just, you killed it. Well, thank you, man. Uh, but just, I, it, it made me go back and really start trying to remember a lot of stuff that I saw back then. You killed it. Because at the time, you don't you don't see what's in front of you. You yeah. only seeing what's there right then and there. You couldn't, have, you couldn't have told me while me and Pimp was hanging out, it'll be a few years, he'll be gone, you know? Yeah. I didn't, I never... I never saw that. I only imagined us working in the studio together, yeah. putting out albums, yeah, going to the Grammys, yeah, all kind of stuff. You know, it, any anything life filled with life, yeah. I didn't see uh, death at the end of that. You know what I'm saying? And but it opened my eyes, yeah, when it did happen. I think that's what when you look at Scarface said the same thing. He said, "I thought me and Pimp with Chad would have, you know, would have would have grew old together." Because that's the last when you would hang out with that cat, the last thing on your mind would be death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he was just that full of life. He was just he was just a, a funny dude to be around, a yeah. fun dude to be around. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever meet Willie D? I met him once at the studio and we was working out on a trilogy. It was pretty brief. Oh, you didn't get yeah, to talk I, to him? I always respect Willie D, man. Willie D hard, man. Willie D real hard. The, I like to call yeah. it sternness. Yeah. Like just uh, the yeah. man, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. The man that stands on whatever he believes and he gonna stand on it and that's yeah. hard, man. And he's another one that I can listen to and get a message out of it, but it'd be funny at the same time. Like uh, I listen to like a lot of his old stuff. Well, bald head hoes. Bald head hoes. <laughs> uh, what, what is it? Man, I'm trying to think of a of a funny line he said. Oh, that whole song was hilarious when he was when he, when he, when he was breaking about it beating down. folk up. Oh, funny. he beat some people up. It wasn't just a rap. <laughs> that nigga really beat some folks up yeah, back in the day, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, this dude was a serious contender. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, a boxer. He he loved a box. Yeah, that whole. That was a different different era. Yeah, what do, you, do you think? Okay, I'm gonna ask you this. I don't care if you answer or don't have to answer. Do you think? And I asked, I didn't even get to ask Ice T this. Do you think uh, Willie D, do you think Scarface was wrong for not taking Willie, Willie D to the Grammys? I definitely would have liked to seen them both there. That's for sure. That's for sure, man. But I don't, it, I've watched that interview and it's just kind of hard for me to kind of like really understand how it all Unfolded. Transpired. I know. I, I heard Ice T say in one interview that they didn't know what songs they was gonna sing when they got there. Yeah, like I'm. I'm kind of like when I watched the interview, I, I kind of saw something on both, both sides. sides. You know what I'm saying? Them boys are something else. I mean, because I was just in denial that they was arguing in the first, first place. place. But you know, they handled it like man. I'm the the culture needed that that to see them sit down in front of each other and be candid with each other about that situation. I wouldn't expect nothing different from Willie D from yeah. what I've seen from him in the past. He's always been straight up about whatever he's going to say. Yeah. Just the fact that they, just the fact alone that they did that kind of negates everything that everything else that, that, that happened, happened as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, because there wasn't no nitpicking behind one back. Wasn't no subliminal dissing in songs. Wasn't none of that going back and forth. They sat down like two men and, and talked it out. Hashed out the differences. Yeah. I think that's important. We had a guy here the other day that, uh, had gotten into a little old scrap with a guy and they ended up fighting, nobody got shot. I was like, cool with that. Yeah. You know, y'all just That's fought, needed, gotta, man. That gotta, that stuff like that needs to become popular. It needs to be cool to sit down and talk. Yeah. See now it's just cool to shoot. That's yeah, the cool thing. That's to the do. cool thing to do. Easy way no, out. We need to we need to change the narrative and make it cool to talk or cool to box. 
cool the box. Um, when you go to these cities, this is my last question. Mm-hmm. How important is it to check in when you go to these cities? <laughs> I ain't never got to worry about that, bro. You know you see these young niggas talking about checking in. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we so old. But I'm telling you right now, uh, this, it's crazy how people take that. And I think I asked, I talked to Pimp and about that. <laughs> I mean, call somebody when you get there. That's cool. But checking in, what is this checking in all about? I think if you're there to do business, then you want to, well, you call the ones that you came to do business with. That's uh, a form of checking in? Well, I mean, but you you doing business with them. You check it I, in. I, that ain't checking in. What is that? Checking in. <laughs> you don't want to call it checking in. That is not a good thing. No, it's not. You doing business. You just talk. Just do. Just talking yeah. to. Checking well, in. What is checking in? But like, I I get. I you know I've heard a statement like if you in the streets, if you out there in the streets, something can happen. You know what I'm saying? So, it's it it be in your best interest to be in touch with people that could either protect you from that or help you solve any problems that may arise. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the sharks be out there, man. Sharks definitely out there. <laughs> sharks is out there, man. So you sometimes you got to do that to navigate those waters. You see waters, all these rappers you know coming saying? up dead because of people doing certain things. Yeah. The sharks are definitely out there. You got to make sure. I think it depends on what level of, of the game that you're at that you're and at. what you're doing. Somebody like me. Yeah, yeah. we ain't checking. They ain't checking yeah. for it. What I'm going to check in for? I see, I ain't. <laughs> I just I'm give spending you money to come out here. I ain't, I ain't making, <laughs> ain't making nobody. Ain't making nobody, man. Well, thank you, man, for coming oh, on man. the show, man. Thanks How can people get a hold of you? If they trying to link with you. Yeah, I'm on Steve Below Instagram. Uh, that's pretty much the only social media I got. Well, I got a Facebook, but it's you know. Mostly yeah, no TikTok is your own plan. Nah, I ain't. Shout out to Mac who be on that TikTok. on that Instagram and, and he be doing his little old thing, man. Mac, Mac, Mac Phelps. Okay. That you know Mac. Mm-mm. Uh, no limit, Mac. One did twenty one years. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Back yeah I never it. met him, but I know you talking. Yeah, about. I interviewed yeah. him. Yeah. I always, I, I try to look out. I try to shout people out every now and then. Yeah, yeah, because they show the show love, you know. Yeah, man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. We love you, bro. Love y'all too. What a boss's talk. And we out.